When I started off on my fitness journey, there were a lot of mistakes that this girl right here was making. Honestly, she was working out, she was trying to do her best, but there's just a lot of things that she just didn't know that this girl right here has learned. So in this video, I'm gonna give you guys common mistakes that I made throughout my fitness journey so you don't have to. Let's get into it. If you guys are new here, hi, I'm Alyssa. And before we get into these mistakes that I was making, I just wanna start off by saying there is no quick fix to fitness, okay? So if you're looking for something quick that you could do in two weeks, and <laughs> your waistline will magically shrink, this isn't the video for you, okay? Mistake number one that I was constantly making was relying on things like sweat belts and waist trainers to lose weight. I am not exaggerating when I say I have at least eight to 10 sweat belts and waist belts from various different brands. It had me in an absolute chokehold. I was constantly buying these waist belts thinking like, okay, if I wear this, I'm gonna sweat more, which is gonna lead to me losing more weight. And it's just a lie. I think that waist trainers in particular are used for various different reasons. Oftentimes people use them after a baby to bring all their waist in. People often use them to, when they're working out, if they have excess skin, to hold it in place. But using it solely under the impression that if you put this belt on, that it's gonna make you lose weight, it's just not the reality. And I was doing that for years. Um, it kind of gave me a little bit of a boost. I would put the belt on, I would work out, there would be some sweat in my stomach area, and I would be like, ooh, one pound closer to my goals. And that's just not the truth. Like, I've lost over 50 pounds, and I haven't worn a sweat belt, a waist trainer, in years. What helped me lose the weight was being in a calorie deficit and moving my body. The waist belt, waist trainers don't contribute to that at all. So. I'm specifically speaking that if you're buying waist trainers and sweat belts thinking that it's gonna help you lose weight, it's just not the reality. Another common mistake I was constantly making early in my fitness journey was switching my workouts. I would have a new workout literally every week. I'll be, okay, this week I'm gonna do this, this week I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and I wasn't seeing growth and now that I and been on this fitness journey for some time now, I understand why. I do the same workouts week to week, month to month, at least for eight weeks or more. I work on progressive overload. So basically what that means is that in week one, if I am lifting dumbbells at five pounds, right? I'll lift that for a certain amount of time. And then by week two, I will try to go up in reps, meaning how many times I lift it, or I will go up in weight. So if week one, I was doing five pounds for, five, for 10 sets, week two, I would try to do five pounds for 11 sets. And that's what progressive overload is. You just are constantly increasing the weight or increasing the reps. And when I started doing that, that's when this body changed completely. I actually have an app I will show you guys. It's free. It's changed the game for me. Let me pull it up. The app is called Rep Count. I'll put a little icon here and I'm gonna show you guys. This is my routine, right? This is what I follow. Push, pull, legs, push, and then pull, right? I follow this routine every single week. And what this app does is I program my workouts in it and I can look at how many reps I did each week, how much weight I do, and then the next week I increase it. It's been an absolute game changer for me. If you wanna work on actually building muscle, progressive overload is something that you need to be doing, but that's really more advanced. But in general, you just need to not be switching your workouts. Find a workout routine, find different groups you wanna target. I would suggest starting with a push day, a leg day, and a pull day, right? And do the same exercises each week for that. And slowly but surely, you're going to see the growth. You're going to see the muscle. If you're switching up your workouts routine constantly, your body is not going to be able to grow muscle. And it's just confusing, to be honest. And having a routine, some type of structure, is really going to help you with the growth. Because think about it. If week one, you're doing one exercise, right? And then week two, you do the same exercise, but you increase the weight, you'll be like, oh, wow, like I've gotten stronger versus if you're mixing up your exercises and your workout routines, it's really hard to track your progress. All right, another common mistake I was doing was either I was under eating or I was binging on the weekend. So early on in my fitness journey, I would often skip breakfast. I just was like, oh, I'm not really a big breakfast person. 
and then I would skip breakfast and I would eat lunch, dinner, five freaking snacks throughout the day. <laughs> and what was happening was it was causing me to overeat because I would skip breakfast thinking like, oh, I don't need it, I'm not really hungry. But then by the time lunch and dinner came around, I was famished and I literally would often overeat. That's one mistake I was constantly doing. Also, binging on the weekend. So early on, I had this mentality of like, I'm going to work my butt off during the week. Monday through Friday, I'm going to be in the gym or I'm gonna try to show up. I'm gonna eat as healthy as I possibly can. But then the weekend would come and this is when I was still drinking, I'm sober now, but weekend would come and I would be like, party on, I deserve this. I've done so good this week, this weekend, I'm gonna just treat myself a little bit. And the treats would accumulate. One treat turned to two treats, turned to three treats, turned to 60 treats, <laughs> right? I was drinking on the weekends, which the worst thing you can do is to drink your calories. I was um, you know, eating a lot of fast food or fried things, um, things like that, snacks, like a lot of sweets and uh, chips and things like that as a treat because I had been trying to do so good throughout the week. So that, that one weekend, you'd be surprised that one weekend can ruin all of the things that you worked for throughout the week. So that's a huge mistake that I was making that I would encourage you to not make. It's better to have more balance throughout the week, the entire week, from Monday to Sunday than to be strict and regimen Monday through Friday and then the weekend comes and you just go absolutely crazy. So I would avoid that as much as possible. Another mistake I was making early on was focusing solely on cardio. I really used to hate cardio and I think I know why. It's because that it was mostly all that I was doing in the beginning of my fitness journey. I was like, okay, I'm going to run, I'm gonna be on the Stairmaster for an extended amount of time and I'm just gonna focus on cardio. and that wasn't the best thing at all. Cardio is great. I think it's definitely, I encourage you to do cardio. I do cardio twice a week for my health, for cardiovascular, things like that to work on my endurance. But I weight lift way more than I do cardio. And there's different forms of cardio too. I think walking has been a game changer for me too. Um, and walking's great because it doesn't increase your heart rate like running or Stairmaster does. So it often doesn't lead to overeating. You're still burning calories by walking and it's not high intensity versus when you're doing high intensity cardio all the time, you're going to be exhausted. And that's why I was also doing cardio before I would work out. And then I would be so depleted during my workout that I really couldn't lift heavy or lift really at all. And it was causing me not to have results. Now I do cardio after my workouts. I do low intensity to moderate cardio twice a week to get my heart rate going, to make sure I have endurance, but I'm just not just doing cardio all the time. Now, if you're a runner, um, if you're a different type of athlete that does a lot of cardio, this isn't about that. There are people, there are athletes, runners, that that's what they do. But I'm saying in terms of just solely for weight loss, lifting weights, eating healthy, being in a calorie deficit, it's gonna do so much more better for your body than you just doing cardio all the time. Before we get into the last tip, if you are enjoying this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And I would really love to hear you guys from the comments below. Leave a comment from some mistakes that you have made throughout your fitness journey. Let's encourage each other here or questions that you have as well. All right, let's get into the very last mistake I was making. The very last mistake I was making was comparing my day one to someone's day 50. And what I mean by that is really early on in my fitness journey, I was constantly looking at other people's bodies, creators and things like that that I wanted to look like and being like, dang, I wish I could look like that or I wish I was that strong. And it was very unhealthy. Now, you can look at people for inspiration and things like that, but don't be so consumed where you're comparing yourself to them because at the end of the day, you don't know what they're, what, how long they've been doing that. You don't know what their struggles are and you're comparing your very early fitness journey to someone who's been working out for years just doesn't make any sense at all. Focus on you, focus on your lane, focus on getting better week to week, focus on showing up for yourself every single day. That's where you win. When I stopped putting so much focus on trying to be like everyone else, and I was just like, look, it's me versus me. All I wanna do is show up for myself today and be better than I was yesterday. And that changed the game for me completely because now I wasn't so fixated and focused on other people. Only thing I was focused on was, did I get better today? 
Am I better than I was last week? And when you're competing with yourself, it's like the best motivator because, and it's healthy because you only are comparing yourself to the past versions of you. And that's how you evolve. That's how you get better. I could be old Alyssa's butt in a fitness competition. <laughs> that is my only goal. I'm just trying to outdo me. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for being here. I love this community and I encourage you that if you are on your fitness journey, keep going, okay? It's not gonna happen overnight, but you just have to try to be 1% better every single day, right? I will see you guys in my next video.